Do I buy things because other people tell me to? Yes, yes I do. Hello beautiful people, my name is Kristen. Thank you for stopping by my channel to see what it is that I've spent my money on because booktubers and other readers and subscribers have told me to read something and I, I'm listening to you. I haven't read them yet, but I have bought them. And I do wanna start, I went to Barnes and Noble to just look around and I checked out with this lovely bookmark. Isn't that awesome? It's just beautimous, beautimous. Oh, it's sticky. It's like, whew. looks like an old card catalog, which if you know, I own a card catalog. So this is super, super up my alley. So first, I don't know if you're out there still, but Sugar Coated Mystic recommended a fantastic book that I bought at Barnes and Noble that's beautiful called Dinner with the Presidents. So this has deckled edges. It has lots of beautiful photographs and um, accounts of the presidents from Washington all the way through Biden. So this is a recent release. This has a lot of research on what goes on in the dining room as far as the details of the food, the china, the chefs, the guests. It just seems really, really interesting and a beautiful, beautiful book that I am going to really enjoy. I think she recommended this right after I had done either a TBR or a review on one of my presidential books. I am trying to read the different books written by the presidents themselves. It's going to take me a while. I really only read one a year in November. I am reading Carter this year, so I haven't done my release of my TBR for November, but there it is, sneak preview. And this lovely book, I'm not sure when I'll get to it, but I own it and I'm happy about it. And the second book I bought at Barnes & Noble was recommended by Lachlan. I will leave her channel below. I don't read a lot of romance, but she does. And this was one of her top books, I believe of 2022, maybe 2021, but I think 2022. I um, picked this up because it sounded really spicy and fun and adventurous when I do want to read a romance. So this is a story of a boy who is alcoholic and a girl who is addicted to sex and getting herself in trouble in dangerous ways. And the two of them cover for each other and a bunch of chaos ensues. And I mean, I, I don't think it's gonna be shocking that they end up getting together, but I think the book is talking even about the deeper concepts of addiction themselves, but then in some humorous and kind of humanistic ways of trying to be really sympathetic. And Lachlan was just talking about how much she loved, loved, loved these characters and, and was always sad. And I believe there is a series, I'm not sure if it's the same people, I think it is, or at least the same friend group, that kind of thing. But anyway, I thought, gosh, that sounds kind of, you know, like a good one to pick up, so I thought I would give it a go. Now, um, Ben at Overly Average Ben had recommended If Cats Disappeared from the World. This is a book that is translated to English that is about the, I, I don't know if it's like a deal with the devil to pro prolong their life or some other kind of mystic opportunity, but basically a person who is near the end of their life, but they are granted a certain amount of time to remain on the planet if they allow something on the planet to disappear permanently. So kind of like it's a wonderful life kind of thing, right? Like what would happen if this person didn't exist, if this thing didn't exist? Uh, what would it mean like if coffee just went away? And uh, I think there's a pet cat that's involved and so uh anyway it's not a very long book and it seems like it's a, a cute philosophy but with a heartwarming story or message that just really sounded nice and I love this this cover it's just adorable so I got it 
then I was influenced by Aaron Facer and had picked up a long list of things that he had recommended. So I picked up a couple of them from thrift books. So this is William Morris's News from Nowhere and Other Writings. This is classic writing, several different uh, short stories that I'm not entirely, I, I remember his reviews. I will try to at least link his channel below, um, as well as, I'm not even sure anymore how to say this, the Mabinigion. Um, these are classics, more highbrow kind of literature that I always enjoy listening to other people review. I always am a little intimidated, like if it's above my pay grade, um, you know, I don't always fully, it takes me a while sometimes to fully wrap my brain around a lot of the literature that has a lot of symbolism or allegories or a lot of poems that need to be sat with. I don't always do the best with that, but I wanted to give it a go. So these were two that were recommended for me by Erin Facer. So Erin, I'm going to pick them up sometime, hopefully in the next year and give them a go. Then this wasn't necessarily someone with a channel, but a subscriber, friend, reader who was a history major. We were talking about our love for history and I was asking about certain characters in history that I knew a little bit or even quite a bit about, but had some questions about. One of those was Stonewall Jackson. And he said, oh, if you wanna know about Stonewall Jackson, there is the book that is the best, that goes into in-depth, but it doesn't tell you what to think, and you get to decide, was he a good guy or not? You know, it's just really well told, and that is Rebel Yell uh, by S.G. Gwynn. So, this is a definitive kind of biography of Stonewall Jackson and everything that happened over in that Virginia East Coast area. Uh, so I really look forward to that. His office was really close to my old workplace and we would kind of hang out there and I would just kind of learn little pieces about him, but I, I, I want to know more. And then by the same author, which was also recommended, he said, hey, this author is amazing and great and you should read Empire of the Summer Moon, which is the story of the Comanches and goes into their history and really does an excellent job of explaining that. And I thought, great, I really, really want to read that too. And what's funny is I really thought that this book, until I got it, was the one that the new movie's about, but it's different. That was the Osage people and this is the Comanche people. So different tribes, but I think that it's, you know, kind of one of those things like I'm supposed to be learning about this, that these, these books keep on coming up. So thank you, Mitch, for that recommendation or those two recommendations. I really look forward to learning a little more history because you can never know too much history. Then I picked up a book that I was influenced to pick up by Gemma at Gemma Books, and that's the Book of Night Women that she just really raved about and I totally expect to see in her top books of the year because of her review on this. So here it is. I'm not um, totally sure. It's Jamaica and I'm not sure if it's, yes, the, the plantations and the slave trades and that will go perfectly with the book that I just finished that I reviewed in October, The Radical Act of Free Magic, that also talked about freeing of the Jamaica slaves. So really excited about that. Then these last books were kind of a combo of three channels that I tend to watch. Heather at Reading with a Vengeance, Nikki at Red Dot Reads, and Gloria Z. Thompson. They've, they've all three kind of talked about these three books, and I know that these are they're the reasons why I picked these kind of books up. One is The Last Bookshop in London. Um, this is August 1939, uh, around Hitler coming across Europe. Um, Grace has dreamed of moving to the city, but the bunkers and drawn curtains she finds at arrival are not what she expected and didn't expect to be working in a dusty old bookshop. So bookshop, war story, I mean, it seems like it's going to be good, y'all. Then Tanya French, The Searcher. This is 
pal Hooper thought a fixer-upper in a remote Irish village would be a perfect escape after 25 years in the Chicago police force and a bruising divorce. He wants to build a new life in a pretty spot with a good pub where nothing much happens. But a local kid whose brother has gone missing arm twists him into investigating. I mean, kind of a, a, I mean, anything set in Ireland, I'm generally down for. And I really do like, like I gravitate towards a lot of, when I do read a romance, a Nora Roberts, you know, set in the pub remotely. Although I like her because she always has a little fantasy uh, element to hers. But this is, this is, I don't think any fantasy, but it has what seems like a mystery, if not even a whodunit, not sure. And then finally, I think all three of these channels have all talked at one time about Penguin the Magpie, as well as Olive at a Book Olive, who I think started the whole thing because this is a nonfiction memoir about, I believe the bird is injured and the family takes it in and it becomes a loving pet that helps the family through some kind of their own crisis or illness or something difficult in their lives. And I don't want to know too much more about it. I know I knew when my friends reviewed this book, but I've kind of wanted to put it out because it's not a very big book. So, and I want to experience it for my own self. I just think it sounds lovely. Um, I'm not sure if there's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of pictures of the bird in this. Isn't that beautiful? So I am super, I think this is going to be a very sweet, poignant book that I hope to get to sooner rather than later. So those are the books that I have hauled because I have been influenced. It's, it's like, if you have one that you need to influence me with, leave me a comment below. If you've read any of these and you think I should read them sooner rather than later, let me know. This, this is a bookmark that was stuck in my thrift books. It's kind of cute. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> but Thank you for stopping by. Like and subscribe. Happy reading, y'all. Take care.